Hello folks, welcome Just got a couple of things I'm just doing at the minute, they're nothing very exciting, you know, but it's just life at the pottery, you know, plain, simple and sometimes boring, but that's, that's how it is. This is not too boring. Um, so what I'm doing is, I've got a couple of things I just, I'm doing, I'll just show you a, a bit of each. Here I've got these uh, these bisque tank tankards here, and I just want to um, we want to glaze them. So I'm just going to get this somewhat like that. Hope that will work. So as always, you're going to give the, the glaze a good stir. And then I got, I found this up at Weavers. This uh, this is a it's a a Cajun Cajun stir paddle, and it's a really handy thing. You know, sometimes when you you leave your glaze for a bit and it gets like a sediment on the bottom, and you want to get that sediment out of the out of the corners of the bucket. You see that sediment there? You want to get that right out of the corners. So, there we go. Now I can take my whisk give it a good stir like that so I've got a bucket here uh, not a bucket a a container here of some clean water and a sponge and then my other pouring jug here which is I put on the back side of a using that as a saucer to collect all the drips you know because you get quite a lot of quite a lot of drippage don't we right so these I think I dusted them so what I'm going to do with these tankards, I'm just going to glaze them on the inside and just over the over to that line there and then over the handle to about there. Okay, let's just do, do a couple of these and then something else I want to show you I'm doing. So pour in, give it a swill. Wind your wrist up like that and pour it out as you go. You see, and then you get it all covered. Now I've got to hold this down to the line like that and then over the handle like that. So all I'm doing is when I do the handle is, is inclining the the tankard like that and dipping like that you see so that gives us that now what I'm going to do with these afterwards is over there on the my decorating uh, bench over there I'm going to do some some designs in in iron oxide directly onto the bisque these are then later this part here sprayed with wood ash you see Let's do another. Sometimes it's not always easy to glaze, is it? You know, it's a struggle to make pots, but and then you're faced with the challenge of how to glaze the things. And so we fill it about half full, a third to a half full. Give it a little swill. See how I'm, I'm winding my wrist up like that. 
wind it up and then pour and then unwind. Do you see like that? And it's quite a it's quite a trick as well just to be able to glaze that and get it reasonably straight. You see like I've done. Now let's do the handle. Easy peasy. And there it is. You see, when you do glazing, you don't want to get all in a mess. Oh, glaze everywhere, glaze on your fingers, glaze on the bottom of the pots. You, do, you really don't want that. Let's do one more. Wind him up. Swill him around. Wind him up. Pour and unwind at the same time. Dip down and the handle. And there he is. Now, if you dip down and you don't get this straight, you see, what do you do? Well, inevitably, you don't get them straight, do you? Yeah, that's not been dusty. You don't get them straight 100% of the time because, well, we're human and we make, we make mistakes, don't we? So, I don't worry about it too much unless it really jars my, jars my eye, if you know what I mean, and it, it really looks, it doesn't look good. Then I may just take a sponge to it and rectify it and make it, pour it out. Oops, now we got some, it splashed then back out. You see, got here on the, Well, if it splashes, best thing is, don't panic. And you know what? Sometimes, you know, you make a mistake sometimes when you're doing something. And um, you f your first reaction is, oh no, you know. But then, your second reaction might be, oh, hang on a minute. Actually, I quite like the look of that. And it triggers a, a new thought pattern in your mind, a new direction. Uh, and you see something that you hadn't seen before because you had your, your mind set, you know, on a certain, doing it in a certain way. And then that opened up a, a new dimension for you and you saw something different. So that's good to, it's good to be open to that. So if, you, if that sort of thing happens, and you know what, when I saw that splash, then I thought, then I thought, oh, yes. Of course, we can take some, some, um, some glaze and make some, make some dots, you see. We could make some dots. Or we could do some random flickings, random flickings of the glaze using a brush with bristles a bit, you know, and you sort of flick it. And you get like that, what I've got going on there, but all over, sort of like mottled all over, you see. And that can be actually quite quite nice. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> I'm just going to wipe that off, okay? But I may just do a few like that, but in, intentionally, if you know what I mean. Okay, so look, there's four, four, uh, four tankards there, glazed. Okay, what we're going to do now is have a sip of tea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gonna go over there, I've got some things I need to finish. I thought I'd bring you in on them very quickly. I was down at our local farmer's market on Saturday and I made, I made a few um, bud vases. And I, yesterday I couldn't attend to them. And it got a little dry on the bases, I suppose. It happens, doesn't it? Uh, so, I'm, what I'm doing is, you see, ordinarily what I would do with these now, I would just thumb them off and that would be it, finish. Finito, benito. But, 
Uh, they're a little bit hard, so what I'm going to do is I've got this chuck here. It's a little big for these. So I'm locating the the bud vase, you see, in the in the mouth of the chuck like that, and just lightly skimming the just to bring in bring in the bring in the form here at the at the foot just to tighten it in you know and um, another one so as they are at the minute here the, at the at the base I want them to come in a bit you see they're a little bit wide at the base so Sort of roughly getting them on center here. The chuck itself is is fairly on center, and then I'm now let's bring the camera in in there for a bit closer detail. Uh, la, 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 la. There we are. That'll do. I hope that's in focus. So I always, when I trim, I always keep a finger there, you see. And where the corner is here, always break the corner by removing a, a little bit of clay. Take my seal. On there. Let's do one more. He's a little bit sunk in, isn't he? The um, the bud vase. All right. I'll change that. I'll zoom back out again now. Oops. That's it. There we go. Yeah, we had a good time down at the farmer's market. I've got this thing going now. I go down the farm, our indoor local farmer's market. And I take my little Shimpo Aspire wheel and, um, and set it up. And I have my table of pots for sale. And... Um, Meet the local, meet, meet the local people. People come in, and we've got people who sell cheese there, and lamb, and fish, salmon from Alaska, wild caught, rod caught, rod and line, and um, oh, people selling soap. It's a sort of bit of a regular meeting point, you know, for... So it's nice to go down there. I'm trying to get down there on a regular basis a bit. You can talk to people, you know, about... As I was the week before that at Weaver's, just talking to people, you know? We all need to have handmade... Oops. Ah, slipping out of my fingers. We need to have handmade things in our lives, don't we? Um, at least I think we do. I gouged it with my finger.
it's just a quick job this isn't it really just to just to clean up the foot here you see I've got to do a repair on my kiln because the last time I fired it I think I told you I explained that we've got this like a split occurred down down the side of the chimney and uh, I was losing a lot of the gases of the kiln out there and that's why I think we had a bit of a an oxidized firing and it went over fired and we got more bloating so There it is. Well, that's them done. You see, it don't take long to do. Now, I might, I may take some of these now and um, dip them in red iron oxide slip, and then do a scraffito decoration through the slip back to the clay. I might do that. I might. Do... Usually, when I've got some pots like this, I'll do. I'll segregate some, you know, like say, okay, I'll do six of those will be like that, and six will be like the other. You know. So there it is. Thanks for joining us, folks. And, uh, um, yeah, website, on my website, simonleachpottery.com, I do have some workshop dates. They start in April and they go through uh, till early November, I think. So if you're interested in coming here for a workshop to do some practicing, then um, go to the website and uh, have a look, see if there's some dates there that w work for you. Other than that, yeah, my next clip probably will be either making something or outside with the kiln, repairing the kiln, doing a kiln repair job. It's cold at the moment, you know, it's, it's a struggle, isn't it, to get out into the studio and feel your, you, yourself being productive at this time of year. But uh, it's good to have a, a wood stove. At least keep the temperature at about 55 degrees we've got in here at the minute. It's not very warm, but it's workable. We can do it. Okay, folks, well, thanks for joining us, and keep practicing. That is the secret. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.